Hello and welcome to the New Testament Daily with me, Jerry Dierman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every single day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. You can also help others find out about this resource and stay in the Word daily when you click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or share this link with others. So let's pray and then we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for the precious, written, inspired, living Word of God. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, each of us would hear exactly what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here we go. He's talking now in this flow from chapter 5 about how God gave the law not so that people could measure up to salvation through the law because he knew they couldn't and they'll soon discover that they can't. But God gave the law so that sin might be obviously bad. In other words, uh, you didn't realize you were speeding until you saw a speed limit sign. Well, in the same way, God has hundreds of laws and you didn't even realize how off the mark, how unholy, incompatible with God you were until he laid out all those laws and then you realize, oh man, I, I just am not measuring up. And not only does it make you realize how sinful you are or were, but it also makes you realize that you need a savior. And so you look to God for salvation and grace. And of course, he has it provided for under and through the Lord Jesus Christ. So that was the purpose of the law, not to make a way for people to be saved because he knew they'd never be able to be saved by being perfect. It was too late. But to help them to realize well, you have to turn to God because there's no possible way you could ever pay this debt of sin. So chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, I should point out that God says where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. In other words, God says, I have more than enough grace to cover your sin. I have more than enough forgiveness. And so when you realize you've sinned a lot, I have much more grace to cover that sin. And so Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? If, we, if, if more grace comes with more sin, then why don't we just sin more so even more grace will come? Paul said, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? This is a question that everybody needs to understand the answer to. This is a question that Many people misunderstand, and Paul is bringing some correction to this because some people think, well, we're under grace now, so we don't have to worry about sin. So don't worry about it. If you sin, that's okay because you're under grace. God's not holding you accountable to every little thing. And that's what Paul says. Shall we continue in grace? Excuse me. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Here's the answer. Certainly not. <laughs> that's a pretty clear answer, isn't it? Uh, the King James says, God forbid. Certainly not. Here's the question. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? See, when we receive Jesus' sacrifice on the cross as payment for our sin, we're recognizing that God is seeing us on the cross with Jesus, that God sees that we have already paid the price for our sins. So to be saved, you have to die to sin because you were recognizing, you're recognizing or considering that that was you hanging on the cross in the person of Jesus Christ. So he says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin? When you get born again, you're acknowledging, oh yeah, that was me that died for my sin and that person's gone. And this is a new person now that's been born into the family of God. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? So when you get saved, you don't get saved so that now you can sin without guilt or without the need for forgiveness. No, no, you, we need to stop sinning. We need to stop sinning. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? This is what it's talking about. Every one of us who were baptized into Jesus, talking about when you got born again and were baptized, not in water, 
but baptized spiritually into Christ Jesus, you were baptized into that death on the cross. It was as if you were the one on the cross. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So that old person of sin is gone. He died. We're a brand new person. And so therefore we should be walking in the newness of the life, not according to the old person. And I gave the illustration before that if you were lost your house, lost your home, you're put out in the cold, you're freezing out there on the streets. I mean, filthy, it's dirty, people are attacking you and such, and it's a horrible situation. And then somebody comes along and says, hey, I'm going to help you, and uh, I'm going to rent you an apartment, I'm going to stock you up with food, you're going to have central heating, air conditioning, I mean, they just dial you in, I'm buying you new clothes, You've got everything, right? I'm going to get your teeth fixed at the dentist. And they just cover everything and they put you into that place. Well, now what Paul is saying here, or I should say what the Holy Spirit is saying here is, now what you need to do is begin to live that life. Don't continue to live as if you're homeless. No. Now you've been afforded medical insurance, dental insurance. You have a shower. So don't go days without showering. Don't go days without bathing. Don't sleep outside the, the door of the apartment. No, sleep inside. Begin to live as that person. And in fact, go to work. Go get a job so that you can sustain this. Why? You've been pulled out of that other situation to live in a new situation. So live this new life. Don't live a life as if you don't have this anymore. Live the life that somebody by grace gave it to you without you earning it. But now that you're there, now you have legs under you. Now you have a foundation under you. Now you can go get a job because you have clean clothes and, and you're groomed and you've got a bed to sleep and you're well rested. I mean, you've got it made. Somebody did it for you. So now walk that way, live that way. And that's the way it is in Christianity. Having received this salvation by grace, let's Walk like we're saved. Let's talk like we're saved. See, so, verse 5, For if we have been united in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So, I think I read verse 4. Yes, I did. Okay. So, if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So, if when you made Jesus Lord, you were baptized into his death, and it's as if you died on the cross. Then also, he said, we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So the same way that Jesus lives as the resurrected Lord, we should seek to live that way in the same righteousness and holiness. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. See, when you get saved... You're not a slave anymore to that sin. You're a servant of God. You're not a slave to sin. Your body may still be tempted. Your mind may still like to do those things, but that is not who you are. You are a born-again child of God, the righteousness of God in Christ, and you're no longer a slave of sin. You have to acknowledge that because if, for example, this person that was set up and has the apartment now, and they're warm in their own bed and their clean clothes and all of this, if they get it in their mind that, that that's not theirs, they don't, that doesn't belong to them, that they, they're evicted, they have to go out on the street, they might go back out on the street, but it's not true. It's been paid for by you. We should not go back to that life of sin. We should walk over here in this free gift of grace, even, if, even though we didn't earn it, even though we couldn't have earned it. It was given to us by grace. But having received it by grace, we should walk in it. Verse 7, for he who has died has been freed from sin. You died. That person, that old person, that old you that died on the cross with Christ, it died with the sin. That sin's gone. Don't even recognize that anymore. Verse 8, now if we died with Christ, we believe we shall also 
that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves or recognize yourselves or see yourself this way. Therefore, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Jesus our Lord. Let me tell you, our minds can so easily think sin again, and we have to stop and say, no, that's not who I am. No, that's not who I am anymore. I'm a born-again person. I'm right with God. I have the gift of righteousness. Verse 12, therefore, do not let sin reign or rule in your mortal body. Therefore, do not let sin reign or rule in your mortal body. Boy, you have to confront your flesh. You have to confront your mind. He said, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Don't let it be in charge. No, it's not in charge. Do not let it. Verse 13, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Well, how would you present yourself? Well, if there's a certain place that you're tempted, a certain neighborhood that you're tempted in, a certain person's home or being around a certain person or being in a certain environment, well, don't put yourself there. Don't allow yourself to go to those places of temptation. You're presenting yourself knowingly. You know that that's where you're tempted. See, so we shouldn't present ourselves. We shouldn't set ourselves up. Keep your feet from the places where you'll be tempted. Is that right? Keep yourself from saying things that provoke you to sin. The Bible says your body follows your tongue. So don't speak sexual things or perverse things, telling sexual jokes or whatever it is, because you'll trap yourself with your own words. We don't present ourselves. My whole body now, my, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, my mouth, my ears, everything belongs to the Lord, and I need to present those things to him to say, Lord, I as a whole person, including my entire body, belongs to you. I'm not presenting my body to obey sin anymore. I'm presenting my body to obey you. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. Verse 14, for sin, I love this, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. For sin uh, shall not have dominion over you. For sin shall not, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Well, see, when they, they were under the law as Jewish people, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, and you just can't keep up. I'm sinning, I'm sinning here, and I'm sinning there. You couldn't keep up. He said, you're not under the law. That doesn't mean that we don't need to walk in obedience to God, but we're not walking in obedience to God to measure up, trying to measure up to that righteous standard. No, for you are not under the law, but you're under grace. The righteousness was given to you freely. So there's no pressure on you. You didn't earn it. So there's no pressure on you. Just receive it by faith. But having received it, walk like you have it. You got it. You got it. It's like if somebody, you know, if you owe maybe uh, $15,000 on a car, and they're saying, we're going to come repossess it if you don't pay the whole thing off. Well, if somebody gives you a million dollars, and it's in your bank account, and it's connected to your debit card, we'll pay it. Pay the $15,000. Why? It's been freely given to you by grace. See, you don't have to earn it. There's no pressure. Just pay it. In the same way, be obedient. Pay and do obedience. Why? Because you have the grace to do it now. There's no pressure. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Here's the answer again. Certainly not. Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave, uh, that one slaves to obey? You are that one slaves whom you obey? Let me read that again. Do you not know? Verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? 
But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. You're now a slave of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness, weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holies. How do you do that? I don't know any better way to do it than maybe just to stand up, lift my arms up to God and say, Lord, I present myself to you as a slave of righteousness. I belong to you. My body is a living sacrifice, as, is, as we'll see in the 12th chapter. Lord, uh, I renounce all the sin that I've committed, and I thank you for forgiving me and washing me by the blood of Jesus. But I'm not going to present myself to do that anymore. I'm presenting myself to you, Lord, to do righteous. Why? Because you've saved me by grace, and I present myself to walk saved, live saved, to obey you as if I really am righteous now. So... Let's see. Verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things which you now, of which you are now ashamed? What fruit did you have? When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. You were free. Why? You were a sinner. So you didn't have any obligation to be righteous because you were a sinner. So you were, in a sense, free. Verse 21, what fruit then, uh, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit in holiness. See, not in sin. You have your fruit in holiness and the end, everlasting life. If you'll live this way, and walk in this grace and righteousness at the end, you'll experience everlasting life. Somebody said, I thought we already have eternal life inside of us. We do. But if you don't live as if you do, if you don't live as if you've really received the righteousness of God, which gives you eternal life, right? If you don't live that way, then you can't ultimately have it. You need to receive it by faith. And if you really believe it, walk in it. Act like that. Stop sleeping out on the street. You've been brought into the family of God, so live like that. And if you'll live like you're in the family of God, that's faith that you believe that you receive that by grace. Verse 23, another famous verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin. If you choose to try to earn it, then you're going to owe God. It's death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What another great chapter, and it's just becoming so crystal clear that you cannot be obedient enough to be saved. You cannot earn your salvation. Just receive it by the grace of God. But now that you've received it by the grace of God, be obedient, not to earn salvation, but because you've been given salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that's clear because it's an important point and we need to walk in it. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow for chapter seven.